everyone, it's Vault Fox. Welcome back to my channel. And I apologize for being a little bit absent from this channel. I've had a very busy past couple of weeks. In the middle of April, my husband and I went to PAX East in Boston. And then three days after we came back from that, we went to my very first convention as a cosplay guest at Fan Expo Cleveland. And I had an amazing time to say the least. I am definitely gonna be putting out more videos about the convention itself and all that stuff. But what you guys are here for today and most likely why you clicked on the video is the panel that I gave at Fan Expo Cleveland. My panel was just about how I plan my cosplay projects and I decided to specifically highlight my Bo-Katan build because well, one, I uh, still need to make a lot of tutorial videos on that build and I I promise that it's coming. Are you sure about that? And two, it just kind of made sense because I was wearing the Bo-Katan costume at the convention and I could kind of just point to myself and use myself as a prop, so to say. And I just really enjoy talking about this kind of stuff. And I'm really thankful that Fan Expo Cleveland allowed me to give this panel because I never thought in a million years that I would be able to just give a panel on my specific planning process of a costume. Last thing before I get into the actual panel itself, I have to send a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, past and present, because without you guys, this panel, this whole me guesting at Fan Expo would not have been possible. There's a lot of stuff you need to purchase for a booth at a convention, and I needed a lot of it because this is my first one. And without you guys, I just would, I, I don't know how that would have happened. And especially the reason that you guys are watching this video right now is because of my Patreon supporters, because they allowed me to afford a wireless microphone in order to record the panel. Really can't thank them enough for that because one, I'm able to provide this to you guys for, you know, for you guys to go ahead and learn how to plan your own cosplay build. And also for myself, I now have a recording of this panel to look back on when who knows who's to say in five, 10 years, if I'm still doing cosplay panels and this kind of stuff, I can look back on it and kind of see how far I've come. I really can't thank you guys enough for all of your support over the past couple months. And if you guys are interested, I do have a couple of vlogs on my Patreon for the $10 tier. And it basically was me going through, you know, the prep work of getting everything for my booth, as well as just preparing for the panel in general. So if you guys are interested, that's available to you at the $10 tier over on patreon.com slash vault fox anyways i've been rambling a little bit too much so let's get on to the panel i am vault fox i have been cosplaying for about six years since about 2016 20, 2015 i went to my first convention um in kind of a it was more of like a casual cosplay i was star fox and then my real first cosplay was piper wright from um Fallout 4. And that's why my moniker is Vault Fox. It's the vaults from the game and Fox is because I just really like foxes. I am mostly self-taught. I basically absorb any type of tutorial. My in-laws are all carpenters, so they all have all the power tools. They were really excited to buy me power tools whenever I got into cosplay. They don't really understand why I'm using it on EVA foam, but that's okay. I am not a competition cosplayer. I am mostly just, I do this for fun. I really enjoy just becoming my favorite characters and Probably a lot of you are feeling the same way. You just really like dressing up from things that you love. My day job is I work as a line of business risk analyst. I have also had previous positions as a systems analyst, BSA. I used to work in software development and that's where a lot of uh, all the things that I have gathered come from. And also I have ADHD. I was recently diagnosed with ADHD in February of this year. So I don't have everything figured out when it comes to that side of my life, but I do now recognize why I plan so much and why I find so much comfort in planning because of that. So um, before I get going, I'm going to show you a few of my other projects and just kind of give you a rough idea of how long they took. On the left, we've got Harris and Dula. That build took me about three months. I, I mostly sewed everything on that. The only thing I did not make was the flight cap and the lacou that are on her back. Commander Shepard in the middle, that was about five months of work. And I actually had all of that EVA foam in my garage since 2016 whenever I beat the game and that's whenever I started cosplaying and I wasn't comfortable as comfortable to actually start doing it so finally built that back in 2020 and I will be wearing that tomorrow if any of you are interested and then on the far right we've got Jen Urso that build took seven months and I'm gonna just go on to the next slide and we've got on the very far left we've got an Aloy and that took me one and a half months and I'm gonna tell you I'm probably gonna allude to this later on in the presentation but I don't recommend trying to get that much of an armor build done in one and a half months. I 
basically con crunched that entire thing. I really kind of, it just was not, not the best way to go about doing it. And then in the middle, I've got the Bo-Katan that I'm wearing and the Mando that my husband is wearing in the picture. That took 13 months and I was working on both of them at the same time. That's where a lot of the planning strategies I'm gonna talk about came from because it was a lot to balance both of those really large builds. And there were some shortcuts that I took and there were also some things that I would probably do differently. And on the very far right, we've got my Zori Bliss. That one also took a month. That was one of those ones where I felt like I, as opposed to Aloy, I had my ducks in a row and I really knew my plan of attack whenever it came to getting everything done. So let's get on to why I'm passionate about planning. It's relaxing for me and I know that cosplay can be very overwhelming with all of the different mediums that we can use, different, um, different types of materials that we can use, it's, it's a lot. You can do a cosplay on a like shoestring budget or you could spend your, you know, every paycheck getting like something like a crazy, uh, I've, I've heard a lot of people talking about getting their Iron Man suits ready and I'm just like, I don't even wanna know how much money that is that you guys are putting into that. And again, it also gives me, it gives me a sense of control. I know whenever I'm, whenever I sit down to plan a whole cosplay project, like this Bo-Katan one that I'm going to be walking through, it can and it may be overwhelming to you guys the amount of pre-planning that I'm doing. For me, whenever I do that, I I get all of the hard stuff out of the way. I get all the, f actually, it's kind of fun for me. I get all the fun stuff out of the way. So whenever it comes time for me to actually sit down and I have the time to actually craft and get something done after work or something like that, I have something that I can turn to and say, okay, I can work on, I can work on like Bo-Katan's breastplate today, you know? So it just gives me an idea of what I can work on next and so on. This is an ADHD related thing. Kind of helps to grease the wheels of where do I start? What am I going to do today? And just that overwhelm of looking at a character being like, well, where do I even, where do I even start? You know, it's, it's different for everybody where they want to start at. And the last thing, if I don't have a plan, again, with the ADHD, I don't start. I, I deal with a lot of analysis paralysis and this just helps me break everything down into digestible things that I can get done when I need to be doing them. Quick notes before I get into the meat of the presentation. This panel is not really going to be about teaching you how to plan a specific cosplay because we would probably be here all day there's so many variations there's so many variations in budget and what people want to do and such and it's also not going to be about in-depth budgeting because that is a whole other panel in itself and I could probably talk about that if you if you want to talk to me about that at my booth or something that's totally fine but hopefully things that this will be is good I hope gonna be more of an outline of steps that details how to plan your cosplay project like the actual project that it is because when you are going to cosplay a character that's a long-term project and that's something to be very proud of whenever you are completed with it and also appropriately rewarding yourself along the way for the hard work that you're doing because this is a lot we're all kind of just doing our own thing you know no one is a no one is a cosplay expert no one knows how to do this the right way there is no right way in my mind whatever way you want to do it do it that way this is also going to hopefully help you through the overwhelm of where to start whenever you're planning a cosplay and a toolbox whoops, excuse me a toolbox of strategies that you can utilize during your first build or even you know if this is like your 17th or 18th build things that you can implement into it so the first step that i do whenever i'm planning a cosplay I choose my character. So anytime I see this screen, I just think of that announcer in the Super Smash Brothers going, choose your character. Chances are everyone in this room, you gained a desire to cosplay because you saw a character that you either saw yourself in, a property that you really like, or in my case, most of the time the cosplay chooses me. I. My husband calls it delusions of cosplay that I get. We'll be watching. He saw it whenever we saw Bo-Katan in season two of The Mandalorian show up in season three or episode three. He was like, I see the gears turning. I see you planning this in your head and you haven't even put pen to paper. Usually that's how I pick my characters. So obviously you're going to want to have a character to start actually planning for your build. Another character that I didn't really necessarily choose to cosplay, the cosplay kind of chose me, was that Jin Urso 
that I showed on a previous slide. I didn't choose it because I thought I was capable of sewing that flight suit. I didn't choose it because I thought I could make that armor. That was back in 2017. I had no idea how to sew. I had no idea how to work with EVA foam or even, I, I don't think anything on that was 3D printed, but I don't want to, I don't want to discourage you from not going after a character or a build that you're really passionate about. I have had people ask me, do you think I should start with a, you know, a simpler build? And obviously that'll probably be a lot easier on you to start with something simple, like go thrifting and get, you know, clothes that look similar to the character and then weather them later. But I also don't want to tell you to cosplay a character just because it's easy. If they're like, for example, if you really love Bo-Katan and it's your first costume, enthusiasm can carry you an incredibly long way. And you're going to be working on this project for a good amount of time. So you might as well be working on something that you really like. And oh, did I switch? I am so sorry. All right, because we're going on a step two. I don't know how to turn. <laughs> but um, step two is all of the research and Majority of you probably understand that the very first thing you're wanna gonna do is get some reference photos of whatever you're cosplaying. Now, I have built costumes with two reference photos and I have cosplayed costumes like this Bo-Katan where I, I have so many photos on my phone, it's not even funny. But that's the first thing that you're going to want to do once you have your character, gather as many reference photos as you can Preferably get one full body shot from the front, the back, and if you can, the side. But I understand that that's not always possible. So you can kind of like wiggle room with it. And um, the next thing that I would recommend is look up tutorials, look up anything on YouTube. You can even find really old blogs that people have built for, um, like for example, my Commander Shepard, I built a lot of that using a blog from 2012 that someone built that costume off of. And I learned a lot of stuff from that. So it's, there's a lot of not reinventing the wheel. There's a lot of, there's a lot of tutorials out there that kind of cover basically everything you could need to know. Even if it's not for your specific character, you can look for tangentially related um, costume type of tutorials. For me, if, so obviously whenever I was making this costume for Bo-Katan, there weren't any tutorials because it had, you know, it had been like a week that it had been out. So I was looking up, I was looking up um, just generic 3D printing tutorials. I was looking to see if any of the modelers that I knew had files on hand and it was kind of funny, I actually had people reaching out to me being like, hey, I modeled this like really quick, do you want to test it? So that was kind of nice in my, um, for me, but if, don't discount, don't discount YouTube, don't discount a good Google search, it will take you a long way in building your costume. And then the last thing I would also recommend is to join the build groups on Facebook. Um, usually if you look up a character in, um, like you just like look up Bo-Katan build or such and such character, or even the overall property, like costume build on, on Facebook, you usually will find something. I, the only thing that I would caution you against with Facebook groups is they can be very overwhelming. For example, the, this Bo-Katan build group that I joined, there were, so many choices of paint that I could use for this specific blue, it almost just, it, again, it was that analysis paralysis. There were so many choices, I didn't know which one was the best for me. So I ended up just settling with what I liked the best. So that's just a word of warning whenever you go into those groups. It can be a lot, so just don't worry. Pick what you think is the best for you. And another thing is if you look up parts if you look up if any part or parts of your costume can be purchased or commissioned. And again, Facebook is a great place to look up stuff like this. People will constantly write in the, or they will constantly make posts. You guys can sit, you're fine. You can see people like posting their work and posting their STL files and you can get a good um, read for things that way too. Again, going back to the looking up if parts of your costume can be purchased, this flight suit was purchased. I bought this flight suit off of Amazon because I was working on a Mando suit as well, and I just knew that my my sewing skills, they're there, I could make a flight suit, but I know how long it takes me to do that. And I just didn't have that time, I had to spend it on learning how to make the, learning how to do the chrome paint on the Mando. For me, it made sense to buy these because it saved me a lot of time, and it's okay to admit 
if your skill is not to the level that you think it is and you want to focus on something else whenever you're working on the build. Another thing you can do is you can look in art books and those types of things like references from Twitter occasionally if you follow like the costuming people from certain shows they will occasionally show you behind the scenes photos of the costume for any type of reason. Um, I know specifically um, so with my Aloy cosplay that is from a game called Horizon Zero Dawn and the community um, that works it's Guerrilla Games that made the game. They are super great about getting reference photos for cosplayers. They like they they like thrive on it. So it's it's worth a look to see if any of the people who worked on the show can you know have behind the scenes. You can reach out to cosplayers who have completed the costume before you and ask for any type of advice. The only thing that I would suggest if you're going to do that is come with what I call good questions. And I'm not saying this to be, um, I don't know the quite word, I apologize. Don't come to someone and ask, how did you make your costume? Because that is a very broad question. If you came to me uh, and asked, how did you, like, what color did you paint your armor? Or whose files did you use for your armor? That's something I can answer. That's like a digestible question. So that's kind of what I'm getting at with that. You, and you also need to understand that not every cosplayer is open to that. I am. I am. Totally, I welcome that type of stuff. I. I don't see why I should keep that information to myself. I would tell you guys if I had the videos done that I had tutorials on this costume, but I don't. <laughs> it's coming. I. I just like to share the wealth. I don't see the point in like gatekeeping a paint color that any of you could go to the store and go get. Now, step two and a half. <laughs> this is some more research, and this is where you got to research yourself. So these are some questions that I usually ask myself whenever I'm deciding on a costume um, project long term. So the first thing, where do I want to wear this costume? Now that can be anything from a convention to you just want to wear this purely for photo shoots or you could even want to just be making this for TikTok videos. That is totally fine. If you're going to make a TikTok, like a TikTok cosplay, you really only need to worry about the, you know, the waist up and it's really nice. You don't even have to wear pants when you're making a TikTok. There's, there's probably other situations that I'm forgetting that you would want to wear a costume at, but think about really where you want to wear it because that's going to go in that's going to come into play whenever you you are building the costume. Again, example with this, I wanted to make sure that it was comfortable to wear for long convention days and for me to walk around in. So I wanted to make sure all that was all squared away. Um, the second question, ask what your rough budget is. You do not have to stick to this. I just really, I really recommend saying, okay, all right, I'm gonna spend like a hundred bucks on this costume. But who's to say that, you know, a month or two down the line that you get a raise at your job or you get a promotion or something and you have more expendable cash to throw at it. This is always, you know, this is always in flux. Like you don't have to settle. You don't have to say like, oh, I settled on $100. I am only gonna spend $100. It's just a good idea to have an idea of how much you wanna spend or else you're gonna just keep spending money in my experience. The third thing, decide on a date or a deadline to complete your costume. Now, if you decided that you're gonna wear this costume at a convention, congratulations, your convention date is your deadline. So you've got a deadline picked out. If you don't, if it's not a convention and you're just kind of like, oh, I would like to get this done whenever, I still kind of recommend that you get a date in mind that you want to get it finished by so that you can kind of reverse engineer and work back from that to know how much time you're going to have in order to finish it. And this last question, I apologize for saying what level of accuracy because I don't necessarily mean that. It is important to remind yourself or even like ask yourself, okay, do I want to make this Bo-Katan costume to say the Mandalorian Merc standards or 501st standards? Side note, this is not, this is not to any standards. This is to my standards and to getting it done standards. You also might want to ask yourself if you want to compete in the costume because that's a different level of, you know, crafts, craftsmanship. Again, I'm not a craftsmanship cosplayer. I That's not the type of stuff that I do, but I respect the people that do do that. Again, if you wanna do something like screen accuracy, or if you just wanna do it for fun and just enjoy the ride and see if you can do it. Again, these are just all good questions to kind of ask yourself so that you're not, you know, just kind of spiraling in place. And on to step three, where we are actually going to break down a costume. I typically break down my things in a notebook because I find whenever I write things down, it just transfers a lot better into my brain. If you want to use a Word document, that is totally fine. And what you're going to want to grab is a full body photo of the front and back of your costume. And don't, this is very important, 
don't worry about the how whenever you are breaking down your costume because once you're going once you look at a photo of your costume you're at least for me your eyes are going to be bouncing around everywhere they're going to be like oh my god how am i going to make that how am i going to do this don't worry about the how right now we will get to that and the last thing is we're just going to break the costume down into individual parts it sounds simple and that's really because it is. So on this next slide, I have a photo of Katie Sackhoff in, I have looked at this photo so many times, it's not even funny. What you probably see whenever you look at this is, I, I'm looking at it right now and just my, my, you know, it's, <laughs> my head is just full of just absolute nothing, just being like, where am I gonna start? So what I do is I take this photo and I start from the very top or the very bottom of her, the photo. So you either start with the shoes or you start with the wig. And on this next slide, I will have everything broken down. As you can see, there's a lot going on here. Usually I'll look at this and go, oh my goodness, there's way too much for me to make here. And that is correct, but we're going to break this down. So we've got the wig up here, we've got the headband, and we've got everything else under here labeled. So I've got, you know, two of these neck pieces, two of these bracers, and then I'm going to break down the back of her costume, which is a lot easier because we broke down most of the costume pieces on the front. All that we've got to work on here is a jetpack in the back plate. Now on this next slide, I'm going to have, I have every single thing on this costume that needs to either be made, purchased, or is just there and I'm gonna have to figure out how to get it on my body. I would say that is the most important thing is to get your photo and get every single individual thing that you see on the costume. And again, you can go back, if you, if you see something that you missed, you can always go back and add it. This method that I use is very friendly to things being in flux and being, you know, kind of the way that us cosplayers are, where it's like, uh, kind of like a chicken with your head cut off sometimes, wondering how you're gonna get this stuff done. So now that you have the list of all of the indiv individual pieces you'll need to make, or purchase, it's time for us to dig deeper into every single one of these things on this slide. So this is where your research is going to come in handy from step one. Don't worry if you get to a piece of the costume that you don't know how to make yet. Again, don't worry about the how, we will work on that. And the first thing that I would say is you're going to want to determine with this list is which one of these things are you going to make? Which are you going to buy or commission? And again, if you find this process overwhelming, I know that that's a lot of stuff on this, you know, on this Bo-Katan costume. You don't have to do everything at once. You can break it down and say, all right, I'm going to break down every single thing on Bo-Katan's head. I'm gonna break down, I need to get the wig, I need to get the headband, and if you decide to do the makeup. That's a lot simpler than going all with everything. So you can definitely break it down into chunks and I have done that in the past. I actually did that whenever I was making this, this presentation because it even, I've made the costume and I got re-overwhelmed whenever I was writing everything down. And it's, remember that you're going to add steps for purchasing things like supplies if this is your first time working with a material. So if let's say that you, you know, want to work for, or you want to sew a flight suit, I would hate for you to, you know, get to sewing the flight suit and not have a sewing machine. So you're gonna have to add steps in later slides to you know, remember to make sure that you have a sewing machine if you don't have one. For now, what I'm going to do in this panel is I'm going to break down the steps on Bo-Katan's helmet because there's a lot going on. Step three is we're going to break down this helmet into actionable tasks that we can actually complete in order to finish the helmet. I have a column where what mine would look like because I am ex I'm experienced with 3D printing. I just I just own 3D printers and I've learned what I know from YouTube and other people that are way smarter than me. So for mine, it says, you know, again, this is not important, the steps here, but I have got, I'm going to look for the STL file. That's the actual file that you load into the 3D printer that actually prints out a helmet, hopefully, if your printers are you know behaving that week. And then after that, I've got to see, so see, I have actionable items. I have finding that STL file. I can check that off and get that nice little dopamine rush for like doing that. And then once I've got the STL, I print it, 
that task right there seems really simple, but it's usually not a very simple step whenever you're trying to print something. And then so on and so forth, like painting. So every single step that needs to be done on this helmet is written out for me whenever I need to actually sit down and work on it. And then in the you column, which again, I don't know everyone's skill level. I don't know what everyone is familiar with. Yours, if you don't know 3D printing, so I'm looking at it from somebody that has no experience with that. I would say your first actionable task, if you don't have a 3D printer, would be to buy a 3D printer or look up 3D printers that you would like to purchase. And then let's say you have a 3D printer, your first task would be, I'm gonna look up some tutorials on how to print a helmet, how to, you know, based on your bed size and things like that. I'm not gonna get too into the weeds of that because this is not a 3D printing panel. It, you see you're making a task for you to research it. And that's important because having something here underneath your helmet is better than nothing. And a lot of the things that I'm talking about in this panel are based on what's called agile scrum tech methodologies. I don't know if anyone in here is familiar with that. This right here, whenever you're writing down a research step, is what is known as a spike in agile scrum. Essentially what it means is that you are making an actionable task out of researching something. Because sometimes I can, I mean, I can get lost in the research, you know, forever. And there will be times where I'm researching something and and I feel like I didn't get anything done because it's all up in your head, you know? It's all this, it's all like not, I can't think of the right word, but it's not, it's not concrete. You can't, you don't have a physical object for the amount of knowledge that you got into your brain. It's important for you to move forward, but by us making an actionable task for it, we can put it on our, we can put it on our board. And for now, our task list under the helmet is literally to just go absorb, go find information about 3D printing a helmet. And you can do this for anything on the costume that you are unsure of. So for example, I, um, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with Mass Effect. I am working on a Liara to Sony cosplay. And the first thing I looked up was how do I make that a sorry headpiece? Because I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to work with that kind of stuff. So I looked up tutorials on that. I eventually settled on finding finding someone who was taking commissions and I bought one from that. That was an, That's an example of something that I have no idea how to do and I just sat down one day and was like, all right, I'm gonna break down this costume. I don't know how to do this, this, and this. And I looked up, you know, Google, did my little Google deep dive and ended up finding out something. Now the next step is, if I'm on, if I can go on the right thing. Now the next step for us, now that we've got all of these tasks and individual items, is to prioritize what we want to get done. And what I mean by prioritize is, think of the character that you are looking to cosplay, and what about that character do you think is just absolutely essential that you have? So for me, with Bo-Katan, back then, I did not have, I didn't have a wig and I didn't have a headband done. So I was like, all right, this helmet is absolutely critical because to me, that's what makes Bo-Katan Bo-Katan. The helmet I've got at basically like priority one, if you want to call, and that's why it's in red. Everything else that's in like kind of a lighter or, or kind of a darker orange, that is also, I would say that's like, like level two or something critical. So anything above the waist for me, I see as something that you would need for a costume because in my experience, obviously you're going to want to have the armor and stuff like under on the bottom, but you guys have been at the convention all day. People are mostly seeing you from the waist up. So I usually don't stress about the shoes or anything that I'm worrying about until later on in the build. And doing this will allow for you to have the most amount of time with the pieces on the costume that you think are the most critical. So for me, again, the helmet was the thing that I wanted to get out of the way first. So I had, I had months to work on this helmet and I'm glad that I did because I had a lot of problems working with it. I had a lot of problems working with my husband's Mando as well. And it was just nice to have that amount of time to make the mistakes that I needed to make in order to make the costume better down the line. And speaking of the Mando cosplay, I had, I had made, I, I was getting everything ready for C2E2 last year. And I basically started the build in January of 2021. And 
for the first three months, I was working on my Bo-Katan helmet and his Mando helmet. I ended up royally screwing up the Mandalorian paint job, like to the point where it just wasn't salvageable. I couldn't even strip it or anything like that. And I ended up having to reprint and, you know, make an entirely new one. As much as I hated going through that process, I'm glad that I did because now I know how to apply chrome paint properly. It is, it is a lot to do that, and I don't think that I would have done it right had I not made the mistake. So it's nice to, you know, kind of give yourself um, the like the advantage of having the time to make the mistakes because I'm a big I'm a big proponent of making mistakes and learning from them. And you can also do the inverse of this and determine what parts of your costume, like I said earlier, can be saved until last or later so that you devote like a smaller amount of time to. So again, I don't have a jet I don't have a jetpack on. And that's okay to me because nine times out of ten, you're looking at me from the front. And if people see from the back that I don't have a jetpack, that's okay. Because the thing is, is I, I was wor we all were working on these costumes during a global pandemic. You know, supply shortages have been low. You know, sometimes the people that you're working with, they can't get the product to you. So it's just water under the bridge for me, you know? And I, that's why I left the jetpack to last because Again, most of the time, people are looking at me from the front. If they see me from the back without a jetpack, I just make a little comment of like, ah, yeah, I left it on the ship or something like that. If someone's giving you crap about you missing something on your costume, they're not worth your time anyway, in my opinion. So we talked about prioritizing, but I don't want to discount enthusiasm. So if you are very excited about a very specific part of your, cost your character's costume, I absolutely would tell you to start working on that because I made, so that headband for Bogotan, I made that the weekend that the heiress aired on TV. And I was, he, he remembers, he was, I was just in the basement, just working on EVA foam crap, just, I didn't know what I was doing. And I ended up having a headband at the end of it. Same thing goes for the Commander Shepard armor. I really wanted to get that breastplate down. So just one day I just started working on it. And again, I, I say if there's a part on your costume that you're really interested in, and even if it's not like at the top of your prioritization list, go do it. Because enthusiasm can carry you an incredibly long way. For the next thing, we're going to start planning our attack. Now, the, the what you're looking at right now is a lot of post-it notes, and it looks like a lot, I am aware. <laughs> but this is what is known as a Kanban board. And mine is fairly simple. You can see from the top, I've got uh, board, I've got a thing for Mando, I've got a thing for bo and those are considered the to-do list for both of those costumes. On the bottom, it's a little bit harder to see, but they are split into two. One says work in progress and one says done. So what the heck is a Kanban board? <laughs> well, it's really just a fancy to-do list. In the, in the corporate world, a Kanban board is a physical or digital progress or project management tool designed to help visualize work, limit pro work in progress, and maximize efficiency or flow. So again, it's really just a fancy to-do list. So I have my post-it notes assembled in groups where each group is a different piece from the initial breakdown earlier. So for example, I have a, I have a group of post-it notes that are just pertaining to all of the steps I need to do for the helmet. Each individual post-it note on each of these boards is one individual task related to that part of the costume. For example, one group of post-its for the helmet includes every single necessary step to finish that helmet so that's the those are the steps from earlier saying look up tutorials on how to print or you know paint this layer and I I have to get I have to get it this granular or else my brain is just like what is going on I understand that this is very this is overwhelming and you do not have to do the post-it note method but I prefer it because it makes it physical, it's in my face, it's right above my workspace, and I can look up at it and be like, oh wow, I've got a lot of work that I need to do on Bo-Katan over here, and I really should get working on it. So for me, it's motivating, but I can understand that it may be a little bit overwhelming. What I would also recommend is a digital tool. This is called Trello. It's a, basically a Trello board. No, it's basically a Trello board. It's basically a digital version of the post-it note boards that I had earlier. So if you look over to the left, I don't know if you can see my cursor over there, but on the left, we've got all of the things, 
all of the tasks grouped under to buy that I decided I was going to buy for this costume on the to make. It's similar. It's all of the things that are, you know, we, we want to make on this costume. And then we've got a silo here for in progress work. And then we've got one for done. And again, each of these individual lines here, they are individual tasks on the costume that we're looking to, to finish. And on this next slide, I'm going to, I'm going to deep dive into the actual task itself in Trello. This is what it looks like whenever you open it up into the, in the actual digital program itself. Uh, if you look here, I have all of these tasks that are related to the helmet. Every single thing that we broke down earlier, they are inside of this like task bucket here. And what's, what I really like about this is one, again, everything is laid out for me. Every single step basically laid you know, for me, all, all that's left is for me to actually do them and to check them off. The other nice thing is you actually can physically, you know, check the boxes off. It's that's why I really like the post-its because I physically have to take the post-it note from the to-do to put it in work in progress. And to me, that just that signals something in my brain that like, yeah, I'm getting, I'm making progress, you know. And it is one of the best feelings to have all of your post-it notes in that done category, in my opinion. And the nice thing about Trello too is you can set up a due date for each individual item you can I think you can even get it down granular to like you can even break down individual tasks and say like okay this week I'm going to look up information on YouTube and then say next week I'm gonna find an STL file so you can like break it down that way too and that helps a little bit with overwhelm to kind of assign like in a specific piece that you want to work on one week and then the next week you can work on something else and then the next step start making. <laughs> again, this is a very broad um, topic to talk about because again, it's everyone kind of makes it their own way. But these are things that I would recommend whenever you are working on it. So first off would be take progress photos of what you're doing. You may not think that what you're doing is interesting, but believe me, you're going to be so happy that you have these things to look back on and be like, wow, this helmet started from a, you know, <laughs> it was just like black raw 3D print and now it's a fully painted thing. And to me, the, just pictures, like they really capture that kind of thing. So I would recommend taking progress photos whenever you can. If you can't, if you also can, I would recommend like posting it if, you, if you're comfortable doing that, comfortable posting your work in progress. You know, like a lot of people on Instagram will hashtag cosplay whips, like WIP stands for work in progress. If you're comfortable with it, you could also, you know, stream it. I find str I need to get back into streaming. Actually, I need to like get my setup all done. But I find whenever I stream something, I am I hold myself accountable. If I get on a stream and I tell people, OK, I'm going to I'm going to be working on, I don't know, Bogotan's helmet today and I log on and I'm playing like Mass Effect. They're going to be like, what are you doing? You know, they're going to call me out and I'm not giving them what they want. So in my mind, if you're comfortable streaming or if you already do it now, go for it. Like go live and see what happens. You never know. We all know the old adage of like, it's not a mayor. It's a it's a. <laughs> It's a marathon, not a sprint. And you're gonna be spending a lot of time with yourself and your own thoughts while you're making this. And not a lot of people really know, realize or think whenever they get into cosplay that you're spending a lot of time just looking at stuff that, you know, you're spending a lot of time looking at raw 3D prints or you're spending a lot of time with your Dremel out sanding, you know, it's, it's kind of isolating in a way. And that's why I recommend, you know, posting and trying to get involved with the community in whatever way you can, because there's just something to be said about like, I walk up to somebody and they're in a, you know, all of you here in costumes, it's like, I understand where you came from. I understand how hard it is to see a character from you know, you see them in an episode and you're like, I gotta, I gotta make this. It's, it's a lot. And a lot of people, when they get into cosplay, don't understand that the making is just very, it can be lonely. It really can. And I've also really learned to love the process. You really want to try to fall in love with the process, whatever way you can, because again, you're going to be spending a lot of time doing it. So you might as well like what you're doing. I, a lot of people, whenever I tell them that I 3D print, they always say like, oh man, you, you must really hate sanding. I've actually really learned to love sanding. I, 
it's it's like my me time. It's whenever I, you know, put on a podcast or I listen to an audiobook, and it's just kind of me and the sander and my 3D prints. So definitely recommend falling in love with the process. Also ask questions and reach out to people that are, you know, reach out to people that are working on the same costume as you. Ask them, you know, for tips and things. Just ask if like you can get feedback, you know, that's something you could do as well. And try to remember, even though we just broke down a very complicated costume into a ton of individual steps, to take it slow and to always remember to take breaks. If <laughs> there have been many times that I have worked on a costume for, you know, five or six hours well into the night and I really should be going to bed and he comes downstairs and he's like, you need, he has had to physically tell me to stop. He and sometimes that's what you got to do. If if you're lucky enough to have someone in, you know, in your house that can do that for you, ask them. Be like, hey, if I'm too in the zone, you know, pass by, like, give them a cutoff time that you're working on something. For me, I cut off any working on cosplays by 8 p.m. each night because I need time to wind down to go to sleep. And another other thing to remember, you're going to make mistakes. We planned everything out, but you're still going to make mistakes. I just, I talked about how I made that mistake with the Mandalorian helmet and because because I allotted the time, I was able to make that mistake and able to rectify it and go on to making a, a suit I'm pretty proud of making. And again, life is gonna get in the way. The thing is, is like, I've been dealing with his ADHD stuff and the, the funny thing is, is like, I have not made anything in like the past five months this year. I, I, the only thing that I've made is a Fennec helmet and it's, life, you know, that that's the stage of life that I'm in. I'm trying to figure out how my brain's working. I'm trying to figure out all these other things. And life is just going to get in the way sometimes. And the, the sooner you accept that, the better. And again, with that, plans are going to go awry. Like I said earlier, fall in love with the process because that's what you're going to be doing a lot. And at the end of the day, just try to remember that you are not alone in doing this. If you think because, oh, I, I screwed up a paint job or something and I'm you, you start doing that negative self-talk of like, oh, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I did that. You're not alone. I have done so many dumb things on my YouTube channel with tutorials that I still get comments to this day telling me that you, I can't believe you're on the internet teaching people how to do things. And it, it sucks. But the thing is, is I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be making the things I am today if I didn't make the mistakes. Make mistakes, just learn from them. And on to step seven, I would also recommend if you're not overwhelmed with it to kind of keep track of what you're doing. Treat, keep track of how long tasks are taking you. So for example, um, I have this timer right here that is a time timer and it shows me time visually and it shows me that I've got 15 minutes left to get through like four more slides, which I think I can do. I, I, I highly recommend trying to time your steps so that you know for next time. So you can use something like this physical timer that I have here. You can use your phone timer. I also have a screenshot of an app called, it's called Timery. It is really neat in that you can make individual timers for individual steps of the process. So I've got, I can't read this right now, it's too small, but um, I've got individual Individual, like YouTube timers for myself where I, I have timers for responding to comments, for filming, for editing, for each step of the YouTube video. And you can do similar things with your cosplay projects. And all right, so the last thing I wanna talk about is the motivation to actually do this thing that you're doing. So all this planning is great, but how do I actually get myself to work on something long-term? This is my favorite thing to talk about. You should reward yourself while you're working on this. And I'm talking about short-term and long-term goals. So for example, a short-term goal for me would be something like, all right, I really need to sit down and paint, or I really need to weather bo armor today. I know that that's gonna take me a little bit of time, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go out to Dunkin' Donuts and I'm gonna get my favorite coffee, get a donut or two, and I'm just gonna sit in my basement and work on that with my favorite drink. And it, it can be something as simple, it doesn't have to be something that you purchase. It can be saying, all right, every time I craft, I'm going to, I don't know, watch my favorite TV show or something like that. You get to listen to your favorite podcast that you wanna listen to every week. Make it a good experience whenever you're working working on something and kind of reward yourself in little ways like that. And it really goes a long way. Another thing, which is a little bit harder to do because everyone's different, try to build a routine over working on things. So I like to advocate for doing a little bit each day. So especially with dealing with all this ADHD stuff, I have found it very hard to focus on things long-term on like 
for stretches of time. So what I tell myself is, all right, I'm gonna sit down and 15 minutes, I'm gonna put 15 minutes on this timer here. Whenever that timer goes off, I can stop working. I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard some kind of iteration of this before. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna wanna continue working. And that one time out of 10 that you don't wanna continue working, you stop because sometimes just knowing you have the option of stopping something that you're not enjoying will kick you into gear to actually start working on it. Other things that I really think you guys should think about is the long-term goals for whenever you finish the project. You guys might be thinking like, oh my goodness, I have no idea how I'm going to finish this project. But the thing is, is you're going to finish it. I know you will. It, I've had, I have some builds that are still, I have, a, I have an Edelgard costume that I'm working on for it feels like two years and I'm nowhere near done. And the thing is, is I still planned in long-term rewards for whenever I finish that. For example, I have a long-term reward of after finishing this panel, which is my first panel, by the way, which thank you guys so much for coming. I'm going to get a photo with Katie Sackoff here at the convention. And that just kind of happened that she was going to be here. But my other long-term goal was I bought this. I bought a dark saver once I finished the Bo-Katan costume. And it may sound silly. It may sound sound, you know, I don't know. It's, it, may, it may sound silly to be like, oh yeah, whenever I finish this, I'm gonna buy something. But it, I don't know, it helps. It helps a lot. I have also done long-term rewards of I'm gonna book with a really good pho photographer at a convention and that's gonna be my reward is for all of my hard work, I'm going to have really nice photos of my entire build that I can show off and you should show off your work. Don't like... Sometimes people think that they're being annoying on social media by posting their costumes too much or like they think that their costume, I, I, I always feel so bad whenever people feel like this, that they only have one costume and they're posting just that costume and they think people are sick of it. Don't care what people think because you should be proud because this creating costumes is a, pro is a huge project that not a lot of people can see through and you should reward yourself accordingly. And then the last thing is if you can, do a project retrospective. Um, these are both the, these are my favorite things to do whenever I'm done with a costume. This is our dog Aries, and I just love to get a picture with my dog in my costume. It's, I joke that it's the reason that I cosplay, but I, I don't know. There's just something about it that's like, it, it's final for me whenever I've got that picture. I recommend looking back at your project at things that worked that you would wanna do again, and potentially things that you would wanna try out for next time. So let's say you did 3D printing for this costume, and maybe next time you wanna try out working with Warbler or thermoplastics, then do that. You know, it's, it, it's good to learn from your projects in the end because you can use that data to better estimate your next costume. So let's say it, it took you like a week to make a, a helmet or something, then all right, now you know in your head, all right, it took me a week to make, it did not take me a week to make this helmet, by the way. <laughs> But you're, you know next time that you're estimating if your costume has a helmet, okay, I can estimate for about a week or so of work there. It'll allow you to have easier planning. So the first time that you plan a cosplay, it's gonna be overwhelming, it's gonna be a lot. Um, I know I went through a whole lot of stuff here and again, if you have any questions, feel free to stop at my booth or even at, um, I'll, I'll sit up here for a little bit. But it'll help you with your planning of the next costume. I did not know how to plan a costume like this from the one, the first one that I did. Like I only, only even though this is my day job, I only feel like I started to understand my process like a year ago. And again, sorry to keep saying ADHD, but that's kind of thrown everything out the window because I realized a lot of this, what I do here is a coping mechanism for that. So it's been a lot. Again, the most, the most important thing, and this is, I know it's gonna sound cheesy, but have fun. Just that, that's the one thing I want you to take away from this is have fun with your costumes. I, again, my favorite thing to do is take a picture with my dog and he looks like he's screaming at me in this photo, but it makes me so happy to just have that. If that's your motivation to do it, then do it. Post your photo shoots. Don't care if people are like, oh, your costume, I've seen this so many times. Don't deal with that kind of crap because it's, we're not we're not factories we're not machines you know these costumes they take time they take effort they take a lot of mental effort too and you should be proud of that and the people that are sick of your costume after a week again not worth your time because the way that social media and a lot of things are being portrayed is just like this endless content cycle your cosplays are not content they are projects that you 
really wanted to bring to life and you should be proud of that. That's, that's my two cents on it. If someone's giving you crap about it, then not worth your time. That is all that I have for you guys today and I really appreciate you guys sticking around and being here for me. I do have a YouTube channel with some, I do have some planning videos on there, but this is something that I really want to kind of reinvigorate and do differently. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. If you want, you can, you can totally, I'm totally open to DMs if you want to send me messages, questions about anything from the panel or even just costume related in general. I am totally open to that. But yeah, uh, thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I got five minutes. Look at that. <laughs> I got five minutes. Bye. <laughs> you can turn that off. <laughs>